Uh, but let's think about the role of the public and the nonprofit sector now. Now, the interesting thing is that somebody that works for the public or the nonprofit sector, uh, their labor is not necessarily a commodity, if you think about that. Right? And that's in part the reason why some um, uh, government employees are paid better than uh, workers in the private sector. You know, they have better benefits and so on. It's, it's not, you know, the um, labor that works for government or a government entity or even a uh, known for profit is not exactly treated as a commodity. Not as much as it is in the uh, private sector. Now, maybe we should think of the public and the nonprofit sector uh, as owners and stewards of the common for current and future generations. That's one idea. It's like if we have all these productive uh, ecosystems in this country, uh, think about farmland and the fact that more than 50% of it will change hands in the next 20 years because the farmers right now are really uh, aging. I think the average age of farmers now is 59 or 60 years old, or might be even higher right now, uh, because farming is really hard. That land will change hand, and it might go to foreign investors that are just buying land. I know a situation where a very large tract of land in California um, was, um, there was a bid by one of the Arab states to buy it and grow alfalfa for their horses. So there, I mean, it's like when foreign capital comes in, buys a piece of productive land, that could actually be taken out of production of food for the local population. China was entering into long-term leases with Madagascar, I think, to uh, control 90% of their agricultural land. And there was a little bit of a revolt there. Anyhow, but that's one idea. Now, the interesting thing is uh, we talked about money and banking uh, last month. And remember, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet expanded from $800 billion to four and a half trillion dollars between 2007 and now. It's a huge expansion. They did that, this is just the assets of the balance sheet here. In 2007 they were holding mostly treasury bills and some other assets. Now they hold treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities. Well, the amount of the increase in the balance sheet of the Fed, remember when the, when the Fed buys something, just creates the money to buy it. Right, that's, that's the one amazing trick of the Federal Reserve, is that their liability is the ultimate money in our system. When they buy something, they create the money to buy it. And there is no limit as to how much they can do so. Well, the total expansion is greater than the total amount of U.S. student debt and the total value of U.S. farmland, just in terms of perspectives. So, you know, I'm not advocating, but one possible idea would be, what if the Federal Reserve swaps some of this for the land that becomes available when it's being sold and holds it in perpetuity, uh, mandating certain, um, you know, criteria for environmental stewardship so that we could have, you know, young farmers do organic farming on that land, and since we're there, why doesn't buy also all the student debt and just forgives it? Uh, these are like crazy idea, but we are entering crazy times and we really need to look at all the options. So I would say looking at the balance sheet of the Fed as a way of managing our natural commons is something that needs to be considered.